Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Brands Hatch for round nine of the 2011 FIA Formula 2 Championship. We've got a 28-lap race coming up for you today around this uh, classic Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit. Tobias Hegevold, his first pole position of the season. Can he convert it into the lead at Paddock Hill Bend? The green flag that waved then from the back of the field. The lights come on. And we're away, and it's a very good start from Jack Clark. He's going to slice through the middle of them. Jack Clark takes the lead with a brilliant start. So close to colliding as they make their way down into Paddock Hill Bend for the first time. Hagerbold drops to third. Alex Brundle actually has gone around the outside and is at third place. Ramon Pinheiro isn't close enough to make a move. Alex Brundle's going very, very wide. That's going to lose him some positions. We're all through Druids safely so far. That was very close between the lead three. Brundle's been pushed out onto the dirt a little bit, and now he's back in front of uh, his old sparring partner. Jordan King goes across, and we've got collisions. Kelvin Snooks is off. Mihai Marinescu is off. Benjamin LaRiche is off towards the back of that as well. King is going to be out of the race. Snooks is going to be out of the race. Benjamin LaRiche is definitely going to be out of the race. Mihai Marinescu might get it good going again, but now we've got Max Negarev going side by side with Timo Stortz up towards the right-hander at Hawthorne. This is, and we've also got Bortolotti tempting a little late lunge. This could possibly be a safety car, depending on how quickly the Marshals can sort all that out. Snegarev looking very racy behind Timo Storz, but what an incredible start from uh, Jack Clark. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm not sure whether his reaction was better than everyone else or whether he was a bit too quick. We'll have to have a, a little replay, but um, uh, going back to that incident down at uh, Graham Hill Ben, Jordan just came in way too hot, missed his braking point completely, and uh, had to take to the grass, and clearly there were some cars cars there when he came back on so um, safety yeah, car is disaster. deployed yeah. so we've got the I think yellow that's a good decision yeah those, those two cars are still there Jordan's well out of the way but um, that will take uh, a few minutes to clear those yeah so the safety car will go out pretty much from where the incident is actually because the safety car here oh no it has been deployed from the pit lane uh, this time so the race is brought under neutralization if we uh, well here we, here we go then talk us through Jonathan oh yeah King gets out of shape on the brakes really doesn't he yeah, I mean, he uh, obviously never going to make that, and uh, obviously, I think the only thing you could say is missed the breaking point, and uh, that's the only place he could have gone to avoid the, the guys directly in front of him. Um, but of course, with the cars all bunched together so tightly at the beginning of the race, he was always going to come back on and uh, collect some others. So, you know, he's he's um, fairly new to, to this level of racing, and uh, I think you can you can put that down to a novice incident. I think. It's Plam and Kralev towards the back of the field. Safety car then is making its way in. And who is going to bolt? Jack Clark's gone. And uh, it's going to be Tobias oh, Hagerbold. Uh, it's very close. And Brundle's got a front left uh, hanging off at the moment. I don't know what caused that. Um, but it must have been on the run down to Clearways. Well, that Something is... Uh, it needs to slow right down yeah, there. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's all out uh, of kilter, isn't it? It's pointing yeah. to the left when he's trying to go straight. So that yeah. is not good news for Alex Brundle. Yeah. I can only assume someone's brake tested him or something like that well, a little bit further back in the pack. close to him, if I remember right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go casting aspersions, Jonathan. <laughs> so we've got the top four have made a little bit of a breakaway then. Christopher Zanella in fifth, ahead of Mirko Bortolotti in sixth, you can see there. Coming through, there is Zanella in the uh, white and red star machine, the Bortolotti Construzioni car, right up behind actually as they make their way out towards Westfield. This is an opportunity for Bortolotti to stamp on the boost button. I always say stamp, but it's obviously a button on the uh, <laughs> top left uh, area of the screen. And Bortolotti hasn't pressed it. We've got side by side here, Aman Ibrahim and I think Jose Luis Abadin. Abadin going around the outside there at Hawthorns. Good move from the uh, Spaniard. And that was a move for... Uh, well, Alex Brundle, as they crossed the line, was involved too. So uh, Arman Ibrahim actually has lost a few positions. Out towards Sheen they come through the quick left-hander. But the race leaders are already back into our sight. And uh, Jack Clark and Ramon Pinheiro beginning to break away now from Tobias Hagerbold who's got Mickey Monras all over the back, but look at this, here comes Mirko Bortolotti around the outside, we're seeing a replay of Alex Brundle going off, but it's side by side between Zanella and Bortolotti, Bortolotti I think did an early boost and he's got the Zanella's cutback, Zanella, he just keeps it out of the gravel, that's going to put him under pressure from Timo Stortz, but a good move there, and Stortz is going for it up the inside, great late move from Timo Stortz, and now Max Snegarev is in there too, so Zanella losing two positions, it looked to me, we weren't watching it on the screen, that's the uh, problem with such a great view here at Brands Hatch, we end up looking out the window but Bortolotti just got an early boost and as a result was able to uh, get up alongside Christopher Zanella so Bortolotti moves up into that fifth position 
And he has been the fastest man, really, this weekend. And he'll now start to hunt down the rest of the pack. Can Max Snegarev do anything about Christopher Zanella now? As they make their way down Pilgrim's drop, Zanella goes defensive. Snegarev looks to the outside. Is he going to be able to squeeze it around there? No, he's not. That's a very difficult maneuver to pull off. But Snegarev looking racy. There's someone up, off, up at Druid. Who is that? Yeah. Can't quite see. Uh, oh, we've got a replay. It's uh, Timo Storz. Oh, Storz was running very uh, well. Well, he was up in 12th place, actually, so he dropped down the order a little bit. But he has beached it right there on the gravel. We're going to have a live snatch up there, I imagine. And uh, so Timo just losing the back end. And once you get in that gravel, the gravel here at Browns is very deep, isn't it? There's, uh, there's no way of getting out no, of it. It's caught out a few people in the past, <laughs> especially up there at Druids. And it's worth mentioning that the front two guys, Clark and Pinheiro, they're both in the 17s, well inside the 17s, 75, 17, 6. And the, the uh, third and fourth place, they're a good second off that uh, so the guys in front have got a clear margin and um, I think Bortolotti if he was with that group at the front he would probably be the same sort of pace so it'd be really interested to see what he can do now Clark is just edging the gap away and uh, he's looking to become the next winner in Formula 2 and the fifth winner of the season so we would have had five winners in uh, six meetings, I think so. Oh, into the gravel. Who's that? That's Mikkel Mack. Has he kept that out the wall? Yes, he has. That was a big moment there for, for Mikkel Mack, and uh, he did, did well to not put that in the tyre barrier. <laughs> he did very well, actually. Uh, just uh, obviously carried a bit too much speed through uh, to Paddock, and uh, we've, we've seen that countless times here at Brands Hatch, um, but just managed to keep it out of the wall, luckily, and can continue. I think it also has to be said that um, I'm quite surprised that Hedgefield is uh, doing uh, 18 fours when you know he was um, clearly on pole position uh, for the race. I would have thought he'd be uh, able to match uh, Clark and Pinheiro's times. Here comes Mirko Bortolotti though, very, very close on the way down into Paddock Hill. Bend and he sends one up the inside. Monras puts the car in the middle of the circuit. Bortolotti didn't really know which way to go. And uh, that was a very, very close moment up towards Druids now. And Miki Monras takes the inside line. And here we've got a move. We've said Mikkel Mack and uh, Jose Luis Abaddon have been together all day. What's going to happen here? It's Abaddon on the outside being unceremoniously squeezed onto the grass. And uh, he wasn't left much room really there, was he? So Jose Luis Abaddon a bit with uh, nowhere to go. Here we go then. Yeah. It's uh, Mack. Oh, he gets out of shape. So... Oh, that's a, that's a difficult. It looked as though the gap was there. It did get airborne. It looked as though the gap was there, but that left-hand kink kind of uh, ruined it for him a little bit. Yeah, it was always going to be a bit tight, and he would know that. And uh, in my opinion, a bit of a, a bit of a stupid error, especially when they were having such a good scrap anyway. I mean, it's a bit of a shame to end it like that, isn't it? But into clearways for the final time comes Jack Clark. That's Ramon Pinheiro behind, but the checker flag is out, and Jack Clark takes the checker flag and his first win in the FIA Formula 2 Championship at his home circuit here at Brands Hatch. He is going to be delighted. Second place for Ramon Pinheiro. Who is going to be third? It's going to be Hagevold ahead of Monras, ahead of Bortolotti. And uh, sixth place should, in theory, be Christopher Zanella. But uh, Jack Clark, what a fantastic result for him. He is going to be a very happy man. Congratulations to our top three. An excellent race, uh, particularly for Jack Clark. An excellent start as well. I can't quite get over how close they were to colliding at the, uh, at the start of that as he sliced through the two of them. Ramon Pinheiro hasn't been on the podium this season and as a result has a little bit of trouble getting into his champagne. And uh, he is old enough to drink, isn't he? I'm not 100% I'm not, I'm not sure.